Hey guys, it's been a while. Um, today I want to talk about my experience in the OMSCS program so far. So first we should talk about what is OMSCS. It's a Master's of Science in Computer Science offered by Georgia Tech. That's the top university that offers it, but other universities do offer it as well. And it's very cheap, um, but also very high quality. So this is, I kind of, I think I found out about it at Cognizant. One of my coworkers was telling me about it. And then I did some research. I'm a very, I'm Nigerian and we're very like academically minded. So we try to get all the degrees, as many degrees as you can give us, we'll, we'll take them. So I applied and then got in. Another thing is that you don't necessarily need to have a bachelor's in computer science. You could have a bachelor's in something else and then have gotten into computer science. You have some work experience and you want a master's and they probably will admit you. So this is also good for, I know a lot of people on my channel are people from uh, Revature who don't necessarily have a computer science background. Some of you do, but some of you don't. So this is really good if you're interested in a master's. It's also an opportunity, like if you don't have the computer science foundation, like data structures, algorithms, things like that, but you have hands-on experience, this is a good opportunity to kind of get some of that theory. So as you can see, they have six specializations and they do add specializations as time goes on, but you basically pick one of these. Um, I really got into this for the machine learning. I'm, I'm taking classes mainly in machine learning and uh, computing systems. So if we take a look at computing systems, you can go to this website as well, but you can see the classes you have to take which are the core classes, and then you have some hours of electives. So you can pick three classes from these, and then you have 15, or in this case, 12 hours of electives, which is about four classes, which you can pick from classes that aren't in the computing systems um, specialization. So you can pick any of these. Now, when I first start out, and then let's just look at machine learning just for the sake of it. This class, Intro to Graduate Algorithms, is required for five out of the six specializations. So, and it's notoriously difficult, um, but also I think it's pretty important. I haven't taken it yet. It's probably going to be one of the last classes I take in the program. You can see these are the specializations that if you do any of these, you have to take it. Oh, I, the only specialization you don't have to take it for is this one, interactive intelligence. Um, you have a choice. You can take this software development process, or you can take graduate algo. And I would bet most people pick um, SDP over graduate algo. All right, so now I wanna talk to you about my experience so far, which is really the point of the video. Um, so when I came in, I was really, I, I came in, um, I became interested in the program around the same time as ChatGPT came out, that was November, 2022. And um, I wanted to learn machine learning because I feel like, okay, let's take it to the, the furthest extreme. Right. Let's say AI takes all software engineering jobs, which I don't think is going to happen, but let's assume it does. I feel like the machine, my theory at the time, at least, was the machine learning engineers are going to be the ones who are safe. And I felt like they make a lot of money. And it's something I've been I've been interested in AI from the time I was young. One of my first toys was this toy called Robocop. I guess I can probably show it here. Robocop is a movie, but there's also this toy, very programmable. Sorry, not Robocop, uh, Robo Sapien. This, yes, I still have one of these. So it's like programmable and it knows when it bumps into things and it kind of reverses, it has a really cool voice. So I was into AI from that moment. And anyway, so I was planning to take machine learning classes and computing systems classes because I don't have a bachelor's in computer science. So I wanted to know things like how an operating system works because I don't know about that in my job. I don't work with operating systems in my job and I never took it in undergrad, but I'm interested in how a computer actually works. I want to like go as, as low level as possible. So I thought I'd be taking classes like this, but then when I got admitted, I was intimidated. I thought computing system classes are going to be too hard. They're going to be too quantitative. You don't have a math background for this. You don't want to, you just got in, you don't want to get kicked out. So I was like, okay, what's the easiest class I can take for a first class, right? And that took me to, to human computer interaction. OMSCS is good because there's a lot of like 
there's a large community. There's probably tens of thousands of students. So you can go on Reddit and read a bunch of people talking about the program, which for me is really good. I like a lot of feedback. I Google things a lot and read what people have written about it. So what what I saw a lot was HCI is pretty easy. Now, so I took HCI. I've taken HCI twice now. I've withdrawn twice. So to me, it's not easy, and this is why. Technically, and I guess this video is going to turn into what I think about HCI because that's really the main class I've taken so far in the program. I'm currently taking operating systems, which is going well. So I'll probably have an update for that in like a couple of weeks. But this is why HCI is not easy. Let's just click on it. So it's it's easy from a technical perspective. Like there's almost no programming in this class. But it's not easy from a assignment perspective because there's a ton of essays like a ton and each essay is like eight pages so if you're good with writing essays and you're good with getting stuff done on time then it probably will be easy but you can see each of the assignments and then you have one team project at the end and the assignments are like a key part of the grade yeah written assignments are 40 percent so if you're not doing doing good on the assignments you're probably not going to pass the class you're definitely not going to pass the class so this is the thing that i ran into at first i was shocked i don't know why i was shocked i should have just read this but i was shocked at how much writing there was and how lengthy the writing assignments were and how um strictly graded they were like it's not a creative writing class it's like they're telling you write about this and then you need to write about that and if you miss any part of what they told you to write about they're taking points so it's like that but the class itself is fantastic like the learning material itself is fantastic so i am going to retake hci and i am going to make an a but the the work required to make an a the actual assignments are are pretty tough for someone like me whereas a programming class because i'm doing programming every day basically now i'm doing programming in java so a class where you're doing programming in C is still going to be relatively hard for me. Like that's the class I'm taking right now, the operating systems class. All the programming assignments are in C or in C++. Well, there's one in C++. But that's still easier for me than HCI. So programming, it, it, it really depends on who you are. If you're someone who's not really technical, who's not do programming every day, then a class where you're kind of writing essays or taking tests and quizzes, those classes may be easier, maybe. But then if there's if you're programming every day, then a programming class, which might be harder for someone who's not technical, could end up being relatively easy for you. But the big takeaway, first of all, I really endorse the program. It's great. I'm learning things that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to learn in my job, and I probably wouldn't have had the discipline to learn on my own by reading books. like. I had an operating systems book for, for a year and a half. I barely read it. But now I'm learning things about operating systems because the program is forcing me to do it. Also, the cost is relatively low. It's like $500 a semester, maybe, around that. So if you're working um, full time, I feel like investing that into your education and getting something like that on your resume and then just getting the knowledge, that's not bad at all. Um, so, but the main advice I would want to give if you apply to the program and you get in, or if you're in the program right now, I would say don't try to game the classes that are easier. Maybe we should go back to the, the thing that has the list of all the classes. So these are like all the classes that are currently offered, right? Um, don't try to pick, okay, I'm new, which class is going to be easier? And don't be intimidated by the program. Take the classes that are interesting to you. Because I didn't even know what HCI was when I took it. The main reason I took it was because I thought it would be easy. I thought it would be a way to ease into the program. But then in operating systems, which which is hard, but I'm actually interested in much more than I am in HCI. Even it's hard, yes, but I'm willing to put in the effort. It doesn't feel like busy work, you know. It feels like it's worth it. So I would say my biggest advice would be, even if there's a class here on like quantum, quantum hardware, for example, 
like I feel like I'm definitely interested in this. I feel like the me of today would take this. But me like a couple semesters ago would have been like, oh, this is probably going to be really hard, blah, 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 blah. And then I would try to take something easier. I feel like if you're going to get an F where you're, if you're going to withdraw anyway, you, you might as well withdraw from something that you found interesting. So, uh, yeah, that's my take. I'm going to do more. I'm willing to do more videos on the program if you guys want. And on my uh, path through the program, let me show you guys the class I'm taking right now. It's 6,200. This one. This is the class I'm taking right now. I just took the midterm a few days ago. It's good, and I'm learning a lot of stuff. Um, so, what was I going to say? Yeah, I'm willing to do more videos about this if you guys want. Um, but the biggest advice I wanted to give for this one is, first of all, if you're not in the program and you went through Revature and you got a job successfully, uh, and you have any interest at all in ever having a master's degree, do this one. This one's really good. You can do it from anywhere in the world. Uh, it's online. It's pretty cheap. And you it's not it's not gonna take a ton of your time. It, I, I would say it can be done on like 15 to 20 hours a week, something like that. So especially if you're just beginning your career, I feel like this is really good. Uh, but the, the other thing is, do the do the stuff, take classes you're interested in. And this probably has is a bigger lesson in life. Like, a lot of times you're not doing the things that you're actually interested in. You're doing the things that you feel like are accessible to you. So you have like an idea of what your mind can do, who you are, what you can do, what's meant for you. And then you're going for stuff that's like accessible to you. You're not really... Uh, swinging for the fences, going for the stuff that you actually want. I feel like that's my whole life, right? Like I, I just told you I was interested in um, computer science and robotics and stuff, but I'm not good at math. So I'm like limiting myself. I'm only, I only got into computer science professionally after trying entrepreneurship and business and a bunch of things like that, that I felt like were more accessible to me. You know, I didn't major in computer science in college because I thought the math would be too hard. I majored in business which was still interesting, but if I, if I felt like I was a quantitative genius, I probably would have done computer science and learned business on my own. So I feel like a lot of my life at least is going for stuff that you kind of want. You're, you're like marrying the stuff, you, the, your, your desires with your competency. But the biggest thing I've learned so far in this degree program is just go for your desires, you know? Um, Fuck your competency because your 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 desire is the thing that's gonna push you to grow to increase your competency like HCI as I told you writing an essay this is not stuff that's like out of my ability anyone can write an essay maybe that's maybe that's disparaging not everyone can write an essay but I can write an essay but why have I withdrawn from the class because it feels like busy work I can't get myself to do it on time. I can't get myself to sit down for a few hours and type. I can't, I don't really see the point. It's not really that interesting, but I want the knowledge of HCI, but the assignments are hard for me to do because it feels like drudgery, you know, but operating systems doesn't. It feels like I'm touching the machine. It feels like I'm accessing memory on my own, something I don't get to do with Java. So your desires are the things that are going to drive you to improve, to get your competency up to that level. So yeah, go for the stuff you actually want. Um, forget the fact that you're not, you may not be that person yet. And by the way, you may be that person. You know, you don't know until you go for the stuff you really want. So, yeah, this is kind of a rambly video. Um, but this is my experience so far. It's like 10 classes in order to graduate. Uh, this Operating systems is basically my first class. If I complete it successfully, it will be my first class. And I'm taking one class a semester. So it's like a two year thing if you're doing it part time like me. Um, but you've seen that meme that's like, you're gonna be around in two years anyway. It's just, are you gonna be around in two years with the 
with the thing that you want or around in two years without the thing that you want. So it's kind of a cool part-time thing. I'm learning a lot of stuff. In addition to operating systems, I'm going to, I'm going to start taking um, machine learning classes. A lot of machine learning classes. Should I show this? Probably. I don't know if I'm signed in yet. I am. Good. All right. These are the class. <laughs> this is this is my plan. Uh, so these are the classes I want to take. Um, yes, I also did take this, but I did not do well. I withdrew as well. I would probably, instead of data visualization analytics, I probably will retake HCI instead. So yeah, this is my plan. I'm taking this this semester. AI ethics and society is what I'm going to take in the fall. This is, should be a pretty easy class, but famous last words. I'm also interested in cybersecurity. So I've inserted a bunch of cybersecurity stuff, but then a bunch of my classes are gonna be, God willing, are gonna be machine learning related. I really wanna learn how to build models. I feel like the opportunity like right now is AI and machine learning. And it's so disruptive that the, the best strategy I have for shielding myself from that disruption is to really learn it and get good at it and understand it so that whichever way it goes, if it, if it turns out that AI and ML doesn't really affect the world that much, if it's a bubble, then you're good. If it turns out that it's like the next big thing and it, it transforms everything, then you understanding it is going to be good for your career. Even if like, I, I want to start an ML company in the future, even if you do that, like, the understanding you build now is going to be beneficial. So I'm taking these classes kind of like a hedge. Um, yeah, that's my plan. So I'll, I plan to keep making videos as I take classes. And I hope I inspire some of you to apply to the program as well, especially if you if you went through Reviture. Honestly, I think this is like the, this. This program is kind of tailor made for Reviture people. It like it shores up the things that you don't have and it doesn't care what your undergrad was. You know, it just tries to gauge, can you do well in, a, in the program? In my case, whether they were, they, they judged me successfully or not remains to be seen, but it's kind of like, it's, you're going to get admitted. And then based on how much grit you have, which was one of the reviture, reviture tenets, I think, if I remember correctly, based on how much grit you have, that's what will determine if you graduate or not, but they're not going to like pre pre um pre they're not going to reject you they pr i think they have like a 70 percent chance of being admitted something like something crazy like that so they're going to admit you and then the program is going to kick your ass and then you have to decide okay am i going to finish or not going to finish basically all right i should probably stop talking now hope that gave some of you value uh if you're interested go to the or MSCS website, and then just stalk them, read about it. And then I think they admit people in the fall, I think. So yeah, then apply. All right, I hope all of you are doing well and learning and improving. Take care. Bye.